All right, well, welcome to our second uh, support session. We had one um, session last night where we looked at assessment and time management um, and the use of Moodle. So if you missed that and you were interested in going back, we'll pop the recordings up on the events page under the Faculty of Business and Law. Um, yeah, so this is the second in a, in a series of support sessions that we're offering just to try and um, answer any questions that you guys might have. Um, and to introduce you to some of our amazing staff and to take you through just some of the details of the frequently asked questions that we get. And then please ask us any other question that you have or anything that's on your mind at the moment. And um, we'll, we'll see if we can, we can answer that. So just um, we'll have a chat about that. Um, so my name is Belinda. I'm the um, Deputy Associate Dean of Education for the Faculty of Business and Law. Um, I technically live in the School of, of Business um, in the management school and my research space sits around sustainable development and responsible um, decision making and I've been at the uni roughly about 10 to 11 years now. Um, I came in from, from industry and um, absolutely fell in love um, with, with teaching and bringing that industry experience in um, and just the nature of how much the business curriculum and the faculty is changing at the moment is really quite quite exciting. And just um, what a really good base, I guess, this this degree gives you. And, and just the, so many different directions and career careers that um, that you're that you're going to take after this. So um, really excited to have you to have you with us this evening. Just want to kick off with um, an acknowledgement of country for those students who are new to the University of Wollongong. Um, this acknowledgement of country was specifically written for our area and um, uh, in our local area we have the beautiful flame tree and this artwork was designed by our local Darawal Wandanan woman, Samantha Hill. And so you might see this quite a bit um, at, at, at your as you move through your degree with us. So um, I would just like to acknowledge um, the country for Aboriginal peoples is an interconnected set of ancient and sophisticated relationships. The University of Wollongong spreads across many interrelated Aboriginal countries that are bound by this sacred landscape, an intimate relationship with that landscape since creation. From Sydney to the Southern Highlands to the South Coast, from freshwater to bitter water to salt, from city to urban to rural. The University of Wollongong acknowledges the custodianship of the Aboriginal peoples of this place and space that has kept alive the relationship between all living things. The University acknowledges the devastating impact of colonization on our campus's footprint and commit ourselves to truth telling, healing and education. Um, again, so just before we get started on this session, it is being recorded by WebEx and you, it will be available if you want to listen to it after or um, if there's anything you want to check in or if you've got some friends that weren't able to make it tonight, it'll be on our events page. Um, and I did um, create a Slido link if you want to ask a question or you can use that QR code and I'll keep an eye on that throughout. The time that we're together but in all honesty it's really um last night at the session it was really just lovely to have the students talk to each other in the chat function so please use that chat function talk to each other say hi to each other um yeah introduce yourself hobbies what you like what your degree is um what country you're calling from you'll notice we've got ryan calling in from singapore um you know, pop the time that it is for you. Hopefully we're at an, I think we're at an okay time for you, Ryan. I hope we are. Um, yeah, so just, just start a chat with each other. Um, it's one of the most amazing things of moving from that high school environment to university is just the am amount and, and types and the many different cultures and life experiences that you get to, um, to have to have when you're with us and you know you could be in a tutorial and you might have up to you know 10 to 14 different cultures in that one room um, and so it is really exciting the discussions that take place um, and so yeah please start to to get to know each other in this chat space and and chat away with yourselves um, doesn't matter if I'm talking or 
the others are, uh, are, are talking. Um, um, you can listen back to us later. It's more important that you get to know each other. So I guess um, this evening, I guess in the time we have together, I would really love to introduce your academic program directors. So this session is um, very much focused on the School of Business and um, uh, our, our really important that I introduce your academic program directors to you. And these are the people that, um, yeah, you'll get to know throughout your time um, in the faculty of, in the School of Business. Um, and we have Dr. Johnny McKay, and Johnny's gonna, Jonathan or Johnny, I think he might allow you to call him. Um, he's gonna wave at you there. And we have the gorgeous Dr. Maria Kim, um, and Maria's the other academic program director, and they're gonna talk to you about, you know, majors and minors, and who to contact um, in the faculty if you have many questions, which I'm sure you do at the moment. Um, I'm gonna have a chat to you about our degree names and how they've changed recently. If you see that in any of the previous documentation you might have been reading, um, and if you have any questions about that. And then I'm going to introduce you to uh, George, and George Perez um, handles all our internship opportunities within the faculty, and um, yeah, which is really exciting. Um, and so he'll chat to you about that. And so you can start to think about that. And depending on the year that you're enrolled in, just sit that in the back of your mind. And, um, and start planning a little bit early for those type of experiences. So for the time being, I am gonna hand you over to the amazing Jonathan and Maria. Um, Johnny, I think you're first. I think I'm first as well. Thank you so much, Belinda. And welcome everyone to this meeting we have here this evening. Um, as Belinda said, my name is Dr. Johnny, well, just call me Johnny, um, Jonathan Mackay. And I work as a lecturer in the School of Business. Um, particularly, my di my discipline is in management, and I do a lot of research and teach subjects around supply chain management, um, ethical decision making within businesses, and a lot of fun stuff like that. So, a few of you I might be fortunate enough to have um, in some of my subjects at some point during your particular university career. So, Maria and I work as the academic program directors. I'll go through in a few slides time what that really means in terms of the questions we can answer. But in the interim, just wanted to say hi and introduce myself and I'll pass over now to Maria. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, what an exciting day it is, even though it's pouring and so wet. <laughs> we are very pleased to meet you today. Uh, so yes, I am Maria Kim and I'm the co-academic program director for the bachelor's degree. And I'm a senior lecturer in finance discipline uh, at the faculty of Business and Law. And I research and teach in corporate finance, financial management, corporate governance, and international finance at both undergrad and postgraduate level. So I shall be able to meet you in class when you study a finance subject during your second year or third year course. Um, shall we move to the next slide, Belinda? Yes, so let us first introduce you the undergraduate business programs that we offer in the School of Business at UOW. So in the study area of business, there are five possible paths based on your preference, ATA, and the area of interest that you wish to pursue or specialize in. So if we assume that you will study for a single degree, these programs require the successful completion of 144 credit points over the course of three years. Or in other words, you need to complete 24 subjects given that each subject is equivalent to six credit points. So it is the norm that the students take 24 credit points per semester, which means four subjects per semester, which is equivalent to eight subjects per year. So let's look at each degree one by one. The first one with the Bachelor of Business degree, you will undertake the first year as a foundation that covers all core disciplines of business, which provides you with an understanding of issues facing the organizations today from disciplinary perspectives. 
And from the second year onward, you will have an opportunity to major in a particular area of study to develop your area of specialization. And you may also choose a minor in another area of study. We have a Bachelor of Business Administration or BBA, which is more flexible degree, which offers you a broad education across all key aspects of business environment. So while you study the essential core subjects in your first year, as with other Bachelor of Business students, you can then tailor your studies on your own according to your interests and career aspirations by choosing electives from particular business disciplines, or you can combine business electives from different disciplines. So this provides you with the flexibility to design your own program of study after the first year. We have Bachelor of Economics and Finance degree, which is specifically designed for high achievers who aspire to become professionals in the areas of economics and finance and who loves a quantitative study. So you will play with a lot of numbers. So while economics is concerned with a big picture relevant to the operation of a country or financial markets, capital markets, money markets, whereas finance takes a microscopic look at industry risk, firm specific risk, and return on investment. So throughout your three-year course, you will take 20 core subjects, mostly from finance and economics, and then you can choose four elective subjects. Uh, we have a combined degree offered by UOW and TAFE, which is the Bachelor of Business and TAFE Advanced Diplomas. So you can have a choice of a diploma in hospitality management, events, travels, and tourism in your first year at TAFE, and then you can go on to pursue a major study in human resource management, management, marketing, public relations in the Bachelor of business degree for the remaining two years of the study. Finally, but not least, last but not least, there's an alternate pathway for entry, which is also a very popular program through the UOW College, which provides a guaranteed entry into one of our bachelor's program. Okay, if you look at the right side of your screen, which shows you a additional study options post completion of a three year of undergraduate course. So there are additional opportunities to further expand your area of expertise or pursue research and higher degree studies. For example, so there is a one year honors degree which involves 24 credit points of research project and 24 credit points of advanced coursework subjects, which complements your research component. So this honors degree provides students with a competitive edge in employment, as well as a gateway to higher degree research programs. So if you wish to pursue further research in the form of a PhD in the future, you can consider this degree. And in particular, students who can achieve first class honors can have a very good chance of being awarded a PhD scholarships, including the Australian Postgraduate Award and University Postgraduate Award and so on. So, uh, Give you, giving you a brief example of my own, I did a honors degree after three years of my undergrad and I was lucky to have a first class honors which gives me a number of opportunities and uh, chances for me to get different scholarship for me to pursue my PhD. So I've got Australian Postgraduate Award 
Faculty PhD Scholarship Award, and also the industries uh, sponsoring like the Capital Markets Research uh, Association uh, Scholarship Award as well. So honors degree can give you competitive edge for your graduate position when you uh, apply for a job, as well as gives you a benefit when you uh, think of pursuing your research degree. You can also choose to uh, take a more advanced coursework program in the form of a master's degree with a choice of specialization. So the master's degree can be completed directly after your undergraduate study, or you can go to industry first to get some work experience and come back later to the university to pursue a MBA program, which is Master of Business Administration program. Okay, uh, we can move to the next slide. So in terms of the length of study, it depends on your degree that you are involved in. So represented here on your screen is the length of study for the respective degrees based on the full-time study load. A full-time study load uh, requires you to be enrolled in four subjects per semester, which accounts for eight subjects per year. So with respect to the bachelor's degree, full-time study would result in degree completion within a three-year period with an additional honors year. And this length of study applies to bachelor of business, bachelor of business administration, and bachelor of economics and finance degrees. And in terms of the double degrees, which are like bachelor of business and bachelor of laws, bachelor of business and bachelor of arts, or Bachelor of Business and Bachelor of Journalism, the length of study is five years. Mm. And finally, with respect to the package, Bachelor and Master's option, Bachelor and Master of Business, Bachelor of Economics and Finance and Master of Business, or the Bachelor of Business and Master of Business Analytics, you will be looking at three years of full-time bachelor study and additional year of master's study. Okay, so now I'll hand it over to Johnny to talk about who you should be able to contact and in, under what circumstances you will contact those people. Great, thank you so much, Maria. So I can almost guarantee that at some point throughout your career or degree, I should say rather, you will have a lot of questions about the subjects you're studying, you'll have questions about your majors, you have questions about things like transferring between degrees. What I want to do with this slide is to just give you an overview, and these slides will be given to you as well, give you an overview of who to contact when, because it can be a little bit daunting or uncomfortable at times to know who to contact in the appropriate circumstances. So with this particular page, it's a really good overview of who to contact when you have specific inquiries. But I will start off at the bottom, where if you have any general inquiries, instead of a lot of students will go to ask, say, ask you a W, but if it's related to your degree and it isn't satisfied by any of these other more specific inquiries, feel free to get in contact with myself or Maria and we can be the first point of call. We can also help if you're a bit uncertain who the appropriate person to speak to about a particular issue is. So I would very strongly encourage you to use us as the first opportunity if it's a question that you don't think is answered by any of these other people. So if, to go back to the top of this slide, if you have a question about the subject, a specific subject you're doing, which will be the subject code, for example, FIN111, if you had a question about something like FIN triple one, you would speak to either your tutor or the subject coordinator. If it's a specific question about say timetabling or attendance in class, the subject coordinator, coordinator is probably the best person to answer those questions. But really anything to do with a specific subject, you can contact the subject coordinator. You don't feel like you have to necessarily go through the tutor, you can, by all means, contact the subject coordinator for that. Just be wary though, for first year subjects, a lot of them do get a couple of hundred students. 
So in those subjects, it might be easier for you to get a quicker response if you speak to your tutor or your head tutor. However, if you had a question with relation to the majors that Maria and myself are going to go through in the next few slides, we have specific advisors within the faculty who will give you guided advice about those majors. So some questions you might be, ha might be having is, well, what's the, I've had a few students ask about what the mathematical knowledge is required of particular majors. So something that you need a bit more information about a major before you choose it, or even things such as what career paths you might want to pursue from a particular major, the major advisors are the best people to speak for that. They, they can also help with things such as what subjects to choose and when you should choose them, because a number of subjects will have prerequisites, which is a subject that you must complete before you can undertake that additional subject. So between the subject coordinators and the major advisors, they should, and obviously Maria and myself, they should be able to answer most of the general questions you'll have about your degree. Now, the next group to contact is if you have questions that are a little bit more complex about your degree. So these could be things such as transferring between, say, a BBA to a B business, it could be if you've already have prior or prior diplomas or you've undertaken prior learning before, you might want to potentially get some subjects signed off as what we refer to as advanced standing. This could also include advice around changing majors, cross institutional studies, but also mark appeals as well. And the people to contact for that are the head of students. So within the School of Business, we have, or within the faculty, we have five head of students. I believe was the last number. So the way that you contact them is available through the page that's hyperlinked there. So you have you just fill out an inquiry form that gets passed on to the head of students and then you can book an appointment through them and they can help with those particular issues. However, as I said, the first point of call, and you can tell we're both very friendly people and we're happy to help as much as we can. If you have any general inquiries, please feel free to reach out to Maria or myself and we can do everything we can to either help you straight away, or if not, pass on to or pass you on to the more appropriate people to ask. And I think that's it for that slide. And I believe now we're going to go into the majors in a bit more detail. So that's back to you, Maria. Thank you. So uh, we have a range of options for tailoring your degree, which is achieving through having majors. So a major can be defined as a combination or a set of subjects in a chosen area that provides you with the specialization. So a major allows you to obtain and demonstrate a higher level of depth, understanding and knowledge in a specific area. So uh, let me and Johnny briefly talk about each major which you can choose while you study Bachelor of Business, Bachelor of Business degree. So first, accountancy. Accounting, accountancy is about providing reliable, timely, like monthly, quarterly, biannually, annually, and accurate accounting information for decision makers of a corporation, a government agency, or in public practice by advising the senior management on the financial position and financial performance and direction of the company. Business analytics is one of the very popular uh, major these days. It's all about big data. It's all about artificial intelligence and data mining and so on, right? So it teaches the skills to explore and interpret the big data and uncover any hidden values from multiple data sources, which can assist the businesses in making intelligent and informed decisions which will help to enhance the profil profitability of a business. Business law, uh, business law provides you a legal perspective to business practice. So understanding the context, application, and the impact of law on the structures and transaction of business is crucial for business innovation. 
Economics, as I briefly mentioned before, economics deals with the big picture, right? The production, consumption, and distribution of all resources between people and organizations. So economics focuses on the behavior and the interaction of economic agents, including the consumers, business firms, the labor markets, and the government. Finance. Anyone interested in finance? Finance is about money. And <laughs> you're, how to you're, you're biased, money. <laughs> Maria. So <biased>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, go back to my original word. Finance is about money and investment. How can I grow my asset? How can I maximize my wealth? How can I increase the return? How can I minimize the risk? How can I manage any potential risks on the line when I take the risk, right? So you will learn about the skills, techniques, strategies on how to make the financial decisions for your companies, how the financial markets, the institutions, the key players in the market operate and how to value the asset, how to price the financial risk. Okay, financial planning. Everyone must be interested in planning your own financial positions for your future, right? So financial planning is the design of a specific financial outcome that meets your client's needs and objectives given their own financial resources and their own risk profile. So I'll pass it to uh, Johnny, the management and marketing side. Great, thanks Maria. Um, so I'll start off with HR or human resource management. So essentially the big question that HR tries to answer is, how do we attract and retain the best people for our organization? So human resource management is really centered around this idea of identifying, recruiting, and retaining people within a workforce. So it's really trying to center individuals as the main asset to a company. So within that particular major program, you'll look at different techniques around how to adequately identify the best people that you would have for a particular role. Secondly, we then have international business. And international business is obviously critically important these days because that particular major gives an overview of the considerations that need to be made when operating businesses in particular different contexts. So there's a number of different subjects which might look at, for example, conducting business in India or conducting business in China. And the idea is to provide this overview of the considerations that need to be made before you can effectively undertake business in a country, uh, in a particular country. Then we have management. So management is sort of the overarching part that a lot of these other majors are specialized components of. So management is essentially how does an organization operate itself? So this is gonna be looking at things such as managing through change. So how does an organization adapt to particular changes? But it's essentially trying to say, how do we as an organization effectively achieve our goals? And how can we organize our resources, both humans and other resources, as a way of achieving those particular goals. Marketing is essentially the major that you're gonna be looking at consumers. So you're gonna be exploring how consumers behave. Why do we purchase particular things? Why do we all line up for hours on end to get a new iPhone? Trying to explore those ideas of consumer behavior and what they mean for businesses. And it's a really important major as well, moving into the world we live in now where suddenly we can get products from overseas very quickly as well. Next, we have public relations. Within HR, that was a focus on how can we retain individuals within our business. Public relations is about how can we improve or create an image of ourselves as an overall brand. So this does encompass little bits of HR, it encompasses little bits of marketing as well, but it's essentially based around this central idea of trying to understand how we can engage with external stakeholders and the general public to create a better and more prosperous image of our particular organization. Next, we have sports marketing and management, which is essentially taking some of those key ideas around marketing and around management, 
but applying them within the context of the sports industry. So it's sort of a more specialized version of those two majors within that particular context of looking at, you know, issues around how do you actually promote sporting careers? How do you ensure that sporting businesses are going to continue moving into the future? And a lot of those ideas. And then last, but most certainly not least, is supply chain management, which, you know, to, is the best major of all of them if I had to choose. Um, so within supply chain, what you would look at within supply chain management is understanding a product through its entirety from the raw materials that it's originally sourced from all the way through to the end product giving, given to the consumer. So some of the major questions that supply chain would look at is how can we ensure that our products are ethically sourced? What are the most appropriate types of logistics and transportation that we can use? And it's essentially trying to understand how we can take a whole of business approach from not just our organization, but our suppliers and our customers as a way of understanding how the business world itself operates. In addition to that, there are a number of majors that are offered through the TAFE program as well. So these include events, hospitality, and travel and tourism as well. And that'll be the next slide. Sorry, I, I, sorry. I should have I shouldn't have just ended in a, in a silence like that. So they're the mates. Oh, sorry, I'll finish. So they're the majors that we a, offer. A, I was waiting for this amazing finish, Johnny. Okay, I'll, put, I'll do the amazing finish. So for the B business, all of these majors offer you really useful insights into a specialized niche area. I would strongly encourage you through the first year <laughs> to get a good flavor of what you're interested in. But in particular as well, if you are starting your second year and you're uncertain what major you should look at, get in contact with us, get in contact with the major advisors. It's good as well that you can do a minor because you might do a few subjects from a major and realize that you want to change and that's completely fine. So these are a really good opportunity for you to specialize in some of the areas that we offer here in the faculty. Amazing. Thank you. Much better, Johnny. <laughs> That was wonderful. Thank you so much, Maria and Johnny. Um, I love hearing um, our, our academics, um, you know, talk about the, the, their passions and their disciplines and, um, you know, and what they love. Um, and that definitely comes across when I know these two speak um, and when they're in the classroom. Um, so definitely Hachelle would like to change her major to a supply chain. I wonder what your major is at the moment, Hachelle. Hi, Shell. He Shell. Sorry if I'm saying that incorrectly. Um, we'll have to see what, what your major is is at the moment. Um, yeah. And there's such choice, right? I think, um, and I guess what we want to just um, have a chat at the moment is, um, I've called it change of degree names, but um, I just wanted to pull you up. Um, if those of you who are not in your first year and you're on your call, um, you may on your enrollment, it may say the Bachelor of Commerce. Um, and we've gone through a bit of a name change over the last year or so. And so first year students will be enrolled in a Bachelor of Business, which was previously the Bachelor of Commerce. And so for those students who may be in their second year um, or, yet, or their third year, um, you'll be enrolled in a, in a Bachelor of Commerce. Um, there's been um, some, we're getting a few questions through through students saying, you know, do I have to, um, transfer over to the Bachelor of Business, definitely not. Um, you can stay enrolled in the Bachelor of Commerce. Um, everything is pretty much the same other than we've changed the name. And I've just got this slide up here to show you how we changed the first year. Um, and um, yeah, you can change though. I guess you may be asking why did they change the name? Um, just after a bit of market research and a bit of benchmarking, Commerce is not necessarily um, the term that's used in industry um, at the moment. So for us, it's more of a, um, a way for students to understand when they're enrolling what type of degree it is. Um, but, but and for you guys, um, um, yeah, so definitely if you want to chat a bit about that more, like what, what does that mean for me if I'm about, about to graduate, um, 
and you have your Bachelor of Commerce and you have your major. Um, so obviously the word commerce is still used very much in, in industry in terms of um, e-commerce and trading. Um, and, and, um, and we use alternately, you know, this word of this business. So it's, it's um, for us, it was just a degree name change. So have a think about that for you. Um, it is at the end of the day, just what's on, on your transcript, to, to be honest. Um, I don't know if you, it's, if you want to transfer. Um, so we can chat about to you more. Please just contact us to have a bit of a chat about that, in particular what your needs might be. Um, but for those of you who are in your first year, this is what your first year looks like. For those of you who are in your second or third year, you might want to pop in the chat um, just how you enjoyed your first year. The first year is really tries to give you a bit of a feel for everything. Um, and that's really hard when you look at all those majors. Um, but we do try and pick some of the key ones and give you a feel for the different areas within finance and economics and accounting, um, within management um, and marketing, just to see, you know, well, um, the areas that you want to specialize in. And I know, I think it was Max who was on the call who was talking about, hasn't decided what major he, um, he or she would like to do at this point. Um, and I think that's a really good point. We get to, um, you know, some students get to third year and, and still haven't decided what they would like to major in. Um, and there's no, there's no right or wrong. Just really, you know, as Johnny said, you know, make an appointment and come and sit with someone and talk to them about what your passions might be, what area you might want to move into uh, once you do graduate. Um, and as Johnny mentioned, a lot of the times you're really close to just, you know, doing another subject and having a minor. You could have a major in something and a minor in something else. And all that sits on your transcript and just may provide more, more opportunities moving forward. But the core for the first year from, from 2022 onwards, um, you kind of have these six core. And for the seventh core, we've um, done a bit of an offering for you where you can choose either statistics for economics or human design systems, um, human systems design. And because um, we have a lot of students who know definitely they love numbers and they would be in Maria's class in a second for their entire life. And then we have other students um, who definitely know, you know, coming into the Bachelor of Business that they're going to move into, you know, human resources and management and are very people oriented and know that they're going to be in Johnny's class classes. And so um, there was a bit of a choice there on that on that on that other core. Um, and then you you choose one of those electives um, plus definitely your capstone. So that's kind of how we changed that first year a little bit for those of you who are wondering if you're a bit further along in your courses. In terms of the Bachelor of Business Administration, which was the Bachelor of Business, just to, you know, to confuse everyone. Um, but as Maria said, when she was introducing what we offer, the Bachelor of Business Administration, um, you, you're not necessarily declaring a major. Um, now, if you decide the first, if you've done the first year and you're in the Bachelor of, Min Bachelor of Business Administration and you decide, hey, I, you know what, I really would like to choose a major, um, then you can definitely come and talk to us about transferring into the Bachelor of Business and we can have a look at your um, just your, your enrollment and your marks to date and just see what the, the best um, learning environment is for you. Or you may want to stay in the Bachelor of Business and say, you know what, I just really want to be able to pick and choose the subjects that, that I want and not go down a particular road. So um, yeah, lots of lots of offerings there for you. I am, keep asking your questions in the chat. That's really great. Keep them flowing through. And I'm going to hand over to George, who's going to have a bit of a chat to us about internships and, um, you know, working while we're studying, which is um, really, really critical. So I'm going to stop sharing and, and George can share his screen. Thanks, George. Perfect. Thanks, Melinda. Um, can everyone see the slides? Yes. You yes. Just, you can go into presenter mode if you'd like. Yeah, let me have a look. All right, is that better? Beautiful. Okay, awesome. Got through the toughest part of presenting. <laughs> uh, to um, 
Thanks, everyone. Thanks for, for, for coming in. Um, look, from, from my perspective, great information provided by, by everyone. Um, I think it's a lot of information right now for the first year students, um, but I think it definitely sets you in, in, in a good pathway to choose, you know, your, I guess your career where you're going to end up when, when you graduate eventually, right? And I guess for first year students right now, and I know there's a mix of second year students in there as well, um, it might seem far away. And what I'm covering today, it is far away. Um, but the idea is that we, like Belinda said uh, at the start of the presentation, it, it's all about thinking and being proactive about what can I do whilst I'm at university too. So I guess in a way, uh, if you look at it from a perspective of your resumes and applications, when you do graduate and go into industry, how can I become a lot more competitive and what can I add to my, my time at university together with my degree? So that's where kind of a uh, bit of a long introduction, but that's where internships come in, right? So the idea is that we've, we've got a subject and, and the faculty and the university itself as a whole is trying to um, to increase the opportunities provided to students, uh, and that would be through work integrated learning. This might be a term that you might might have heard already, or you might hear along the way. But it's basically any experience we can provide students um, whilst at university that will either connect them with industry or at least be able to provide industry related um, case studies, scenarios, or anything else like that. So. My name is George. I always forget to introduce myself. I do it way at the end, but my name is George and I manage the, um, the internship space uh, within the faculty. And, and obviously there's equivalents of myself across UAW, but lucky for you guys, you're stuck with me when, you, when you're in the business um, and, and law faculty. So look, that's, that's a subject that is, that is attached to it. It's BUS 391. However, we try and promote ourselves as a program that provides this type of experience so this is the team um there's myself and casey uh, not a big team team of two however we we get through a lot of work um and casey is amazing casey is amazing i i totally agree and i wish she was here uh but i'm sure you'll be able to to meet her and um at some point in time when you're interested in, in, in having a chat to us in regards to internships but yes casey's uh, amazing i like to think that i'm pretty good as well. So as a team, we go all right. So that's that's what's good. But if you ever need to talk to people about internships within the faculty, it'll be Casey or, or, or myself. So I always try and hit, um, and Belinda, just tell me about time. Um, I'll try and do it as quick as possible. No but I, I, I always try and hit students with, with what I think is kind of a reality check, right? And, and the idea is that and it, ha it happened to, to me as a, as a student at university, and um, I like to pass that kind of thinking along as well. So um, obviously when you graduate from university and your will with you know, great experiences and, and, and everything else, um, you wanna try and make yourself as competitive as possible, right? So the idea is that if you graduate, you'll graduate with a large number of students next to you. What have you done during your university time to actually differentiate yourself from someone else, right? So if we look at the, the reality of what students or some students might like is they're aiming for the top, right? Big companies, graduate programs, you know, every brand that you see out there and you go, yep, that's where I want to work. But reality is that there's a large number of students that want that same dream, at least as a starting point. So the reality is how can I be different? How can I put myself in the top of that list, at least at least in order to get an interview, right? And that's where internships come in. So where I want you to start thinking about is, yes, I'm getting my degree from the University of Wollongong, which is absolutely brilliant. You learn a lot from academics like, you know, the three of them that are here in front of you, which are absolutely brilliant. But let's look at the other side as well. Am I currently working? Can I do some internships? Can I do some extracurricular activities that will give me that other side of what I need as, as the top applicant potentially for, for someone that's looking to recruit? So that's kind of, it gets you thinking somewhat. So I guess the tagline is I need to be as competitive as possible as a graduate. 
So this is where internships come in, and this is where internships come in. This is where where um, working to greater learning opportunities come in. This is where real life case studies within your subject come come in. So there's there's a lot of things that you can actually do that will link you to to industry and what what I guess the reality is. But I'm here to kind of sell you the internship model, right? So the idea is that what are the benefits of an internship? Um, you get credit, so it is a subject attached to it. You get credit. Right, you do an internship, so that's kind of the, the common. But underneath that, there's a lot of different things that that will actually benefit you as, a, as as a student in term. Right, so obviously you gain work experience, and what we mean by work experience is degree related work experience. So, kind of hoping that a lot of you will work, um, you know, in hospitality, behind a bar, restaurants, whatever it might be, and that in itself is is great to mix it with university. However, that degree related experience will be what we kind of provide as a program. Um, second point is figure out a career path. So I was actually actively listening to both Johnny and, and Maria in regards to explaining the majors, which was absolutely brilliant. I learned a lot. So that's that was that was great. But one thing is knowing your degree and one thing is knowing your major. The other one is figure, figuring out what career path you're going to follow. So what I mean by career path is what industry are you going to land in right so if, if we look at for example i'll give an example of a marketing student are you going to be a marketing student you know working in what particular industry is it the hospitality industry is it the sporting industry what is it right so internships allow you to actually see and try out a a particular industry you might like it you might love it you might not i guess it's a learning experience you build the network i think that's absolutely key when you come into university and and Belinda touched on this at the start, start building your network of students, start chatting, meeting people. That will obviously transition into, you know, the academics and the, the lecturers and, and the tutors that you meet along the way that provide very valuable information and, you know, their experiences as well. But this is about building a network outside of university. So going into a particular workplace and learning from professionals uh, and actually establishing a network with them, right? There's things like LinkedIn and everything else that we'll obviously talk about at a later stage, but definitely there's, there's that opportunity. Next point, I touched on it, learn from the best. I mean, that's a big, big core, right? Um, who is the best? However, it's a starting point. You're learning from professionals that might be an industry, you know, five, 10 years um, after graduating from university. So th there's this rich experience there. And obviously you grow your own confidence. Um, we, the beauty of my role is that I get to talk to a lot of students and a lot of students in you know, second or third year and, and there's still doubts about you know, how much experience do I have in order to go into industry. So obviously these opportunities allow you to grow in confidence. Um, how does the program work? I'm not gonna give you the full spiel. Obviously one, once you're ready, you can look into it. But I just want to run you a little bit how it prepares students for the next step. So we're looking at an application process. So you need to submit a, a written application, which is a cover letter, a resume. If you don't have that prepared or you don't have one, it's a time to, to kind of prepare that and get you up and running with what a, a, you know, a resume will look like when you graduate. There's video interviews um, you know, that, that we take students through, which we use a platform that is used by most of the graduate programs. So if you are that high achieving student and you wanna get that graduate role, um, we give you that practice run, all right? So that's that's the idea behind it. There's face-to-face -face interviews as well with the host organization. We go through a lot of workshops and actually prepare you to be able to, to do the best in that sense. So if you've never done all those steps, you will learn from our application process. Now, why have I got this slide? Because I'm always told you know, provide slides of, you know, brands and who we work with and so on. So this is a little bit of a, of a mix array of, of um, you know, who we work with. Uh, obviously, it will depend on the major that you choose, the degree and everything else. However, um, they're kind of the most known ones. I personally love the SMEs, so the small to medium sized enterprises. I love startup world. Um, because what they do is they allow students to see something from start to finish and they work on projects that will actually really impact that particular organization that you're interning with. So as much as this is great to see, 
I actually believe that there's, there's other spaces that you will learn and grow from um, just, as, just as good as what these guys will provide. I'm going, a lot, I'm going very fast. You can ask questions at the end. Um, why have I got this slide here? Bit random, right, in this point in time. However, for some students, there is an opportunity to travel abroad and, and do an internship, um, you know, through um, the new Colombo plan, which is, I guess, a government funding uh, scheme and, and Maria knows well, um, but there's also opportunities to travel abroad. Um, in a normal world, a couple of years ago, this was, you know, uh, uh, something that students took on a lot. Um, we're kind of hoping that we can start this process again at the end of this year. So this is yeah, just Yeah, we show. can fly. We can fly we can. from this year. Perfect, perfect. We can fly, we can take off somewhere. And you know what, the, the beauty of these types of opportunities and uh, is the fact that we do have students that come to us and say, look, um, you know, I've done all these, what else can I do? The students within the international business major, for example, you know, something as simple as you're doing international business. Have you gone abroad? Have you had an experience like that? Um, economics and, and everything else, you know, you kind of see another side of the world and, and obviously enriches your, your experience um, at university. So that's there as well. Um, graduate story. Look, I didn't put a photo of Matt, Matty, Matthew Bazina. That's not him. That's just a photo, a random photo I picked up. However, I've got a photo of him. He doesn't necessarily like it, but the guy's absolutely brilliant. So his story, I always tell it because he used to, um, back in the day when there was a lot of checkout, you know, people at, at supermarkets, he used to be a checkout person at Woolworths, at Woolies, um, came to the program wasn't 100% sure what his, what his career path was going to be. Um, took on an internship in Sydney, kind of struggled the first few days to say, hey, I'm, I'm traveling to Sydney, it's a bit tough. I said, look, Matty, stick it out. I think it's gonna be a great opportunity for you. Landed casual work afterwards, after he graduated, did a six month stint, they absolutely liked him. Um, six months full-time work, uh, took off to the US with this organization that was growing rapidly um, and now he's just yeah thriving he's a uh, he's a continuous improvement manager with claim center is one of our partners um, and that was basically a story where he wasn't sure where he wanted to land he wasn't sure if he wanted to travel to Sydney and now he's absolutely loving life with the job that he's got so open minds is is key for when you do this program as well and the other one is the partner testimonial. Why do I have KPMG in there? It's because they're very well known, right? And it looks great. Um, but this particular testimony is actually recent and it's really interesting because we placed a student with KPMG for a 16-day internship, which is our program that landed towards, um, you know, a vacation program for Holly, the student. And now she has been offered a graduate program commencing in 2023. So these are the kind of pathways this program can actually provide students. We don't guarantee it. We don't guarantee jobs. The only thing that we guarantee is the fact that you'll come out um, better than, than if you don't do something like this uh, and more competitive as well. So look, thanks. That's it from me. Um, like I said, um, for some of you, this looks far away, halfway through second year. For second year students, it's obviously closer. But the only thing that, um, like Belinda mentioned, leave an elective. If you have an elective subject and you want to get industry experience and add that to your resume and your applications, keep one free for bus 391 and you can connect with us. And then obviously we can provide you, hopefully provide you that great opportunity that you need. Thanks. Thanks, George. Wonderful. So many amazing companies um, that you work with. And um, yeah, and, and I think, yeah, yeah New Adobe has an amazing um, credibility with our employers for our graduates and an amazing rate of employment after having an internship, which is great. Um, can you just stop sharing there for a second, George? Yep. I'm trying to figure it out. Can we figure just... it out? Wonderful. I've got two, I've got like three screens running at the moment. <laughs> So. All right. Um, great. Excellent. Um, thanks, Johnny and Maria, for answering those questions as they come through in the chat there. 
does, I know we're pretty much um, on time. Does anyone have any questions or they'd like to unmute or ask anything else in the chat? Bailey's got, how or when do you pick a minor? Do you want to take that one, Maria? Mm, uh, picking a minor is optional. So uh, many students take the major and then they can have another major. So you can do double major or you can have one major and one minor. Or you can just have one major and then do the rest of the subjects from the electives. So usually you will think about minor, which minor you will do in the later second year or even the third year. Thanks, Maria. Have you, do you have a major at the moment, Bailey? Can't remember what year you're in. Max, where can we apply to set up a meeting? Looking for advice on what classes to take. Johnny. Just, um, Max, if you just send an email to um, myself um, or Maria, then, yeah, I'm happy to coordinate a mutually beneficial time to help you with that. We can have a chat through it. Um, there isn't, just get in contact with us. There isn't a formal form or anything. It's just our emails. And what I'll do actually, because um, I just realised that we don't have our contact details in the chat. So I'll just quickly find the link to um, the page where you can find. Um, was that the, on the slides, Johnny? When you I don't think it was actually. I think, weirdly enough, I forgot to put our emails on the slide. Um, when you say click here on that slide. It won't, it won't have them for us. We, it'll be on the same page that the major advisors is on because that's all from the same page. Mm -hmm. but it won't have ours directly within those slides. Um, but if I can do this very quickly, this is the same um, link that is provided on the, um, on the PowerPoint. And you'll find within that you have the academic program directors um, and you have both myself and Maria's emails available there. So if you just, yeah, if you send me an email, uh, Max, and we can just coordinate and I'm happy to chat, have a chat to you about that um, at the time that's best for both of us. Yep. So we're just in. Thank you very much. Send more current students and they're all down here. Your um, majors and minors you guys are hopefully in here somewhere. It's Johnny and Maria there and that link will, will come through to them. Yeah, beautiful. Um, Hachelle, what do you do in your third year? Um, I think Hachelle, you are a accounting student. Um, Maria, do you know the accounting third year? Okay. Yes, uh, you will take all the 300 levels of the subject, which is more advanced course. So uh, given that you need to take 72 credit points for your major. So in your second year, you will do 48 credit points and then you will do the remaining 24 credit points in your third year and then you will do a minor or you will just do take some electives including the buzz 391 which is the internship yes so just on that note as well i think it's important to recognize you don't have to do a minor no, if you're doing the B, if you're doing the bbiz you have to do a major you don't have to do a minor so you will have extra credit that you have to do in order to finish the degree. So the most common thing we recommend is for students to do a minor if they do have those leftover credit points to do, but you will also have the elective subjects such as the internship program that you can use those to tick off the minimum credit points to get the degree. You can also take the electives from other faculties as well, like from engineering or from arts or, yes, other uh, education, yes. So, um, so, Hachelle, if you switched your major um, in the third year, then you would end up doing the second year supply chain subjects, so which will be an introduction. 
campaign and systems thinking. So there's two subjects or two in an elective that are in the second year, but they're often the prerequisites to then access the third year supply chain subjects. So it kind of will work similar. That's the same with every major. To do the second year, you have to complete the first year. Generally speaking, for most subjects, to do the third year, you have to have completed the second year. But it's, that's not always going to be the case. You can find that information out, though, when you look up the subject and we'll say specifically which prerequisites you need. And I would definitely, if you're thinking about that, Michelle, I would definitely make an appointment with one of the APDs and have a chat about that just to have a look at your transcript and, um, you know, what when did you want to finish your degree, how, how long extra this change may take you, or if you're really close, how much longer would the double major take you? You know, it might just be another semester and you'd have the double major. So, yeah, lots of um, it's really good just to sit down and, and, and chat and be clear in your mind because, you, um, you know, sometimes students get to the end of their third year and um, and they were so close to having, you know, a different double major or, a, yeah, it's just, um, it's really great to come in and, and, and have a chat about that. Any other questions on this rainy evening? No? Okay, well, please, at any time, um, don't hesitate to contact us. Please go through to that, the Faculty of Bell, current students, um, advisor page, um, look us up, email us at any time. Um, please, uh, there was a question about consultation times, which I loved. Please use those consultation times. Um, you know, um, you, on your Moodle site, your your coordinator will say whether it's, you know, a live online consultation times or whether they're in their office. Um, and yeah, and they just love you to come visit and to say hello. So please use that time and don't be afraid by the professor title or whatever else is on the door. Um, that's just their area of study and they would really love to, to talk to you and get to know you. Um, and please, when you're thinking about it, um, you know, contact George, um, look at the subject a bit more um, and really think about that internship because it just adds so much more value to, to your, you know, to your backpack when you're leaving. Um, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for your time. If there's anything you want to review, the recording will be up in a couple of days. Um, but otherwise, we look forward to seeing you at some of our other sessions. I think we've got them over the next couple of weeks. Um, we'll do one on on um, particularly around assessments and we'll do another one on referencing and, and academic integrity which is a big one um, and um, yeah so we look forward to seeing you then thanks everyone thanks colleagues thanks everyone thank you thank, thank you. you again thank you thank you